Hand shorts. Mm.
Amen. Do you have a scripture now by Reverend Dorothy J. Owens, women's auxiliary president, followed by Thank you, God. prayer chant, Minister Tashawn.
and I want for anything. Lord, yeah. Touch your people, God. Oh, Lord, some of us come for one thing, and some come for another. But, Father God, we want to tell you thank you. Oh, God, we want to praise your name. Worthy is your name. Oh, Lord, we want to thank you, Jesus. By your stripes, we are here. No weapon for me is to be able to prosper. We want to tell you thank you now. Oh, move on the service. Bless your man, sir. I'm going to bring a word. We may be here from heaven. Bless the choir. Bless the choir. We sing songs that may encourage our hearts. And we can go out into a bad world to tell somebody about Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we tell you thank you. Move, Lord. Move on your people, God. In the name of Jesus, we need a fresh anointing. In the name of Jesus, can he drive on the air? Yes, they can. Yes, they can. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we tell you that. Oh, God bless everyone. That's some of the sound of my voice. Lord, you have the power. You can do all things but fail. So, Father God, we tell you that. Oh, bless now. Oh, bless now. In the name of Jesus, somebody shout Jesus. Jesus. Shout Jesus. Shout Jesus. Jesus. Oh God, we tell you thank you. Thank you. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, we be so careful. Oh, we be so careful. We always give your name glory. Give your name honor. We're gonna give your name praise. What is in Jesus' name that we do pray? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah!
free conference call, virtual Zoom, whatever it is. Again, I would say welcome. I welcome you. We welcome you. We might be small in number, but we got a big heart. Amen. And thank you for joining us and celebrating on this special occasion. My pastor, our pastor, on his ninth. Thank you, Sister Cooper. I don't know about y'all, but I feel what. <laughs> this time we're gonna have a selection by the Lewis Family Singers.
Cooper told you he was a proud grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. This time we're going to have a tribute by Sister yeah. Gina Lewis. Come on, you can do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thanking God for spare me to be here today. Um, it's an honor. Um, I asked Malcolm last night, he said, make it short. Um, I am redeemed. Life of Malcolm by Regina A. Lewis. Once upon a time in a far, far away land in Curry, North Carolina, a young child was born to Curly Young Lewis and Addie Bedore. He was the seventh child and always says it took them that long to reach perfection. <laughs> Malcolm grew up to be a fine, upstanding young man. He attended King Tut Missionary Baptist Church, where he received his early training for the Lord's work. He joined the church at an early age in 1968. Years ago, we were doing a burn before we planted our body. Malcolm was singing a popular song, Come on, baby, light my fire. <laughs> he looked down at his pants leg and sang, Be careful what you ask for. <laughs> no, he didn't extend any injuries. Since that time, his fire has been lit by God. Amen. When he received his calling to preach the gospel in 1980, he said, Lord, I hear you. And he can't stop praising his name. Amen. I asked Malcolm, if you were telling your life story, what would you say? He said, I will tell them that Jesus is the best influence that ever happened to me. Yeah. Of course, it's the best thing. <laughs> He's just a servant trying to live out the calling of God to please him. I am redeemed who grew up with the Christ, and Jesus has changed my life. In 2017, Malcolm was diagnosed with a tumor in the pituitary gland, and by the grace of God, it was successfully removed. Amen. Amen. In 2021, he was diagnosed with prostate cancer. I asked him if he had any symptoms, and he said, no, the tumor was the gift that kept giving. Amen. When he went for his follow-up from the tumor, they discovered high levels of his blood. He encourages everyone to follow up with their treatments. God's grace is sufficient for us. Amen. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Amen. He said, I am like Matlock. I'm a simple man. If it was just him, his closet would be all black, gray, and blue suits and shoes. <laughs> Baskin Robbins has 33 flavors, but that's good for them, but I don't need that many choices. <laughs> I like working where I had to wear a uniform because he knew what he had to wear next. <laughs> Through the most important time, difficult time of our life, the death of our mother, Malcolm was able to hold to God's unchanging hand and preach the word. Through the years, I have watched the burning passion Malcolm has for God. He preaches and teaches the word in a godly manner. He does this because he said, I am redeemed, brought with the price. Jesus has changed my life. Amen. And I like to say, I enjoy listening to Malcolm. I enjoy being with him. I thank God for him. I pray that he continue to do what God will have him to do. Amen. Amen. There's some privileges to be in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we know about it. <laughs> it's known as F.S. favorite song. <laughs> uh, now we have a youth tribute, tribute by Sister Vanessa Armstrong. Pastor Lewis, let me see. 
On behalf of the youth, we have some small tokens of appreciation. You know, you work and stay on the road. Sometimes the Lord may give you a word. Here is a journal for you to take with you. Small token of appreciation. A truly great pastor is hard to find, <coughs> difficult to part with, and impossible to forget. Amen. Now, Pastor Lewis has been here for nine years. Two things that I have discovered about Pastor Lewis is he loves a youth and he loves to eat. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll take so on behalf of the youth, you love to take the youth out to eat. We have some pizza here for you. But you might want to open up this pizza and see what you got in here. Take it on my <laughs> It says, can't have pizza without a little dough. <laughs> smile. Lady Lois, it's been truly an honor and a pleasure to have known and worshiped with you these past nine years and looking forward to many more. To all that know you, they will agree that your radiant smile and friendly spirit is a part of you. A smile can change a sad face to happy, a cry to a smile, a smile is uplifting. These are all characteristics of you. Proverbs 15 and 13. A merry heart maketh a cheerful, cheerful, cheerful continent, but by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. So Lady Lois, 
accept this gift as a token of our appreciation and love for all the smiles and prayers and love that you have given us. We love you. <laughs>
Come on, be oh Lord, how dying are you that we've given you? to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who is the head of my life. I want to say, acknowledge all of the clergy to our first vice moderator, Pastor Kittro, to the former moderator, my husband, Pastor Warren, and congratulations, Reverend Lewis. Amen. Lady Lewis, congratulations to you all. I just stand to say a few things to, about the preacher of the evening, Pastor Harold O. Warren. He is many things to me. He is my husband of 17 years. He is a father and a grandfather. We have two children, Calvin and Aisha, two grandgirls, McKinley and Janasha, one grandson, Jonathan. Pastor Warren is a graduate of the University of North Carolina, 1981. He is employed at the Wayne Community College in the Basic Skills Department. This coming June 23rd, Pastor Warren will be a 10-year recipient of a kidney. Say, God be the glory. Say, yeah. God be the glory. Yeah. Not only did he receive a kidney 10 years ago, he received my kidney. Amen. Say, God be the glory. Awesome, awesome. God is awesome. Yes, he is awesome. He is a prognosticator of the gospel, 41 years in the ministry, 39 years at Liberty Grove Missionary Baptist Church, just celebrated his 15th year at Hooks Grove Missionary Baptist Church. We give God praise. He loves the Lord. He is saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Yes, he is. He is my husband. I love him so much. <laughs> he is a good, good husband. Amen. I told somebody the other day, I'll fight for this man. <laughs> Not only will I fight for him, I'll fight over him. <laughs> Prepare yourselves for the word of God. The Bible asks us. How can you hear without a preacher? Well, the preacher is here. Uh -huh. Amen. Prepare yourselves for the word. Hear ye him. Amen. Say, God be the Lord. Amen. Amen.
Song. Thank you so much to our ushers who are here as well and other members of the church for the present our congregation. Thank you uh, to my wife. Thank you for that presentation. Uh, we first give it honor to God for he is the reason we are here and the reason we are anywhere. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And we honor him. We honor also the pastor, Lewis, and his wife, Lewis. Amen. For, the, for this occasion, nine years of serving his people here at St. Stephen's Michigan Baptist Church. Amen. To all the other ministers in the audience and the congregation and, and on the roster with us, share with us. Thank you so much to our moderator. Amen. Amen. Our first vice moderator, uh, Reverend Charles Kitchell. Thank you for being present with us. Amen. For giving us your prayers as well. And to our moderator in his absence, I ask that you pray for him and his family. Amen. And then, of course, to our uh, moderator, uh, Willie Johnson, in his absence as well, we honor them to, today. Um, um, uh, have y'all made y'all out of yet to mass for a lot? I got the COVID stuff they got to get out of there. Amen. Amen. I am, I'm very appreciative for them agreeing to travel with us this afternoon. Amen. They are doing a wonderful job for the Lord. I do not anticipate holding you long. John chapter 15 verse 16 John chapter 15 verse 16 is the portion of scripture that the Lord laid on my heart for this afternoon John chapter 15 verse 16 Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. I want to talk on this talk, the chosen pastor. The chosen pastor. I don't know about anybody else, but I want to make sure that I'm sitting under a chosen pastor. And if I'm the one being the pastor, I want to make sure I'm chosen. Something special about someone that's chosen. A chosen person is one that you know is wanted. You don't want to be anywhere where no one wants you. The definition of chosen you'll find in Webster is one who is the object of choice or of divine favor. An elect person. The other definition is it's selected or marked for favor or special privilege. Mm -hmm. If I don't say anything else, I like those definitions. Mm. One who is the object of choice, well, of divine favor. Man. I like that definition because it includes a heavenly being who is divine. Yeah. And in case you don't know who I'm referring to, I'm glad I'm referring to God. Mm. Yeah. He is the divine person who gives us favor. Yes. Amen. Yes. Favor is that quality of God that gives us things we don't deserve. <laughs> Open doors that should not be opened. Yeah. All right. And then closes doors that we don't need to go through. All right, now. He is the divine person who watches over us yeah. day and night. Yeah. 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 And I, I like the idea that, that he is divine. Yeah. Uh, what, what makes him special is that he was before the was and that was a was to be a world. Hmm. Come on now. He was before time. Hmm. Time was created by him. Yeah. And he stepped in time. Yeah. And he lived through time. Yeah. And after a while, he stepped back out of time yeah. and waited for time to end. Yeah. Yeah. Come on now. 
This is the God that I serve. This is the God that, that chose us. He could choose or use any one or anything that he wants. But he chose a creation called man. Well, yeah. God chooses us and chose us before the foundation of the world yeah. so that we might fulfill the purposes he has designed for us. Well, yeah. I just don't want you to think that only preachers are chosen, but, but God chooses you. Yeah. 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 You didn't choose yourself, yeah. but God chose you. Yeah. Anybody played any games when they were younger and you had to wait for someone to choose you to be alive? And you were hoping you weren't going to be the last one chosen? Yes, sir. Hide and seek. Yeah. Baseball teams. Softball teams. Well. That weren't professional. You just out there having fun, but you were in line waiting to be chosen and everyone was being picked except you. Yes, and you were the last to be picked. Amen. And your heart was flirting. Am yes. I going to be chosen? Yes. And then that person who was not chosen, he was the outcast. Yes. Yes. He had to sit out the game and wait. Face strong, rooting for the team that he feels. He, and then it was his turn to pick. Yes. And then we get to shoot and leave somebody else out. Yes. But God, when he not chooses, he does not have to leave anybody out. He has a place and a purpose for everyone. Yes, I like this God that I serve. He yes, has no respect to persons that he, that he chooses who he will. And, and you don't have to worry about whether somebody likes you or don't like you as long as God chooses you. Yes, you don't have to satisfy doing uh, your job to someone else's specifications as long as God chooses you. Because if God chooses you, he also equips you. Yeah. And if he equips you, then he prepares you. And if yeah. he prepares you, he just sends you on your journey. Yeah. I'm glad God chooses yeah. us. And, and, and the thing about the Bible, it, it reminds us that, that God had a peculiar people that he chose. And, and he would not choose every nation. He only chose a certain nation. And the nation that he chose was Israel. And, and Israel, your mission is to let every other nation in the world know that I exist and that I'm the God that protects you. I'm the God that supplies your need. I'm the God that will be with you wherever you go. I'll go with you as a, as, as a, as a, as a pillar of fire by night. I'll go with you as a cloud by day. I'll be with you in all circumstances. This, this is the God that watches over us. Come on. Amen. And he chooses In case you have any doubts about why or who he chooses, call the roll for just a moment. I don't plan to go through all 66 books because time will not be in. But he, he chose Adam. Right. As a matter of fact, since there was no other being around, I'm going to make him yes. and then I'm going to choose him. Well. He, 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 he forms uh, this creation in his own image. Yes, right. And he blows into his nostrils the breath of life. Well, and the Bible teaches us and tells us that we, through Adam, became a living soul. Yes, yes. Man. Yes. He chose Adam as the first man to tell the whole story yes. about creation. Yes. And, then, and, then, and then Adam messed up. Yes. He, he did exactly what God told him not to do. Yes. Of course, he had some help that's not as important as the fact that he just disobeyed God. Right. And, and, he was in, they, and they were influenced by another creature who wanted to be God. Yeah. We have to be careful about people who want to be something that they're not. Amen. Especially when they try to influence you to be like them. Don't want to hit me this evening. Adam, 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 Adam disobeyed God and as a result he was placed out of the garden. Oh. Mm. But God did not leave him. He still promised to be with him. Yeah. Well, right. So we can mess up, y'all. Yeah. But God will still be with us. Right. Mm. Then there was Noah. God chose Noah. Yeah. But the interesting about Noah, uh, some of you will be uh, understand. God said, God looked around the earth and saw nothing but wickedness all over the world. Yeah. Mm. 
Everywhere he turned, every, man, every person he looked at, he saw nothing but wickedness. And he decided, I'm going to destroy man. But let me tell you, if you live right, God will still find you. The Bible says he knows. He knows. Yes. Noah was living right. Yes. He noticed that Noah was honoring him. He noticed that Noah was trying to be right. And so, Noah, I want you to preach to these people. Mm. Remind them that I'm still a righteous God. Mm. Remind them that I'm still uh, God on the throne. Mm -hmm. and, and as a matter of fact, children, if they do not change, I'm going to send the flood yeah. to wipe them out. Yeah. Well, right now. Noah was faithful to his task. Mm -hmm. And those who ignored Noah's warnings, they resulted in the loss of life. Yeah. Uh, Noah had his purpose and mission, but then that was Abraham, known as the father of faith. Yeah. Uh, he was chosen by God because God could rely on him to have faith in him despite what it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Abraham, Abram, go to a land that I'll show you. Yeah. You don't know what the land looks like. You've never been there before. I just want you to go. Well, and, and, and don't even worry about where you get there. You just go. Don't worry about food. Just go. And when you get where I want you to be, I'll tell you. Amen. That's a different generation. Amen. I can hear God say, Harold, go. Where you want me to go? <laughs> go. Why you want me to go? Well, Do I have to go? Yeah. What am I going to find when I get there? Well, that's her. <laughs> if I didn't know, you know but, but God knew what he was doing. Yeah. He didn't put Harold back then. Well, he put Adam right. and Abraham. Yeah. So Abraham could do this. Uh -huh. And then when Israel was kept in bondage, mm -hmm. he called Moses. Well, yeah. He yeah. chose him. Yeah. I don't know anybody else that God would orphan. Ooh. And then have him raised in a house yes. with all kinds of plush surroundings. Mm -hmm. Give him the benefit of the best education yes. well, and then let him be a murderer and send him out in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. But the purpose was uh, if, I, if you stay here, Moses, you won't learn who I am. Yes. But if I put you in the wilderness, yes. you have something about the wilderness will cause you to wonder about me. Yes. And the Bible illustrates and the Ten Commandments tells us that he was on the back side of the death. Yeah. And God was spoken through a burning bush. Yeah. And he said, Moses, take off your shoes. The ground you are sitting on and standing on is holy ground. Yeah. Come on. That must have been awesome to see. A bush burning and not consumed. I, 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 every time I've seen fire, it consumes. Yeah. Yeah. Every time I put fire into something, and that's not often, mm. it, it's, mm. it's consumed. Mm. Yeah. Every, every time I strike a match, uh -huh. it's not long before I'm hurry up putting it out so I don't get burned. I, I, I'm not the aficionado of matches. Mm -hmm. But to watch a bush yeah. burning and it stays complete. That's an awesome sign. Come on, well, yeah. come on. Well, we weren't chosen to see that. Uh -huh. But Moses was. No. Something about God when He chooses us, He has a responsibility. So I I'm gonna I'm not gonna hold you too long, but first of all, I'm gonna tell you, Pastor, you have your assignment. Well, mm -hmm. that right. had their assignment. You 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 have your assignment. You are chosen by God. Well, yeah. uh, so Steve, you ought to be. Smiling right now, you ought to say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, right now. Because, because you have someone who was chosen by God. Mm -hmm. uh, he did not choose himself. Be kind of different with me. I'm going to choose to make myself a preacher. And some people do now, but I'm going to choose to make myself a preacher. And I'm, I'm going to choose to, to listen to, to folk argue and complain about nothing. I'm, I'm going to choose to. Trying to lead them someplace that they want to go. I'm going to choose to, to, to uh, give them the best direction and still watch them go in the opposite direction. I'm going to choose. Well, this is folks who choose themselves. Yes, sir. And I don't know why they want to choose. But, but God chose you. 
Well, that, that's good news. That's good news. The divine, the divine God, the divine lover of our souls, chooses certain people to do certain things. Now, I say, Steve, I'm not going to leave you out uh, because, uh, Pastor, you are also chosen by the people. Hallelujah. And believe it or not, they chose you. They did what they wanted to do. In reality, they were doing what God wanted them to do. And you, you ought to be glad that God speaks to you enough that he puts the right person in your mind so you choose the right one. Hallelujah. Every time you got me to go, well, somebody said, uh, I'm going to vote for him because he looked good. <laughs> Somebody said, I'm going to vote for him because he sounds good. Yeah. Somebody said, I'm going to vote for him because he might be tall. Yeah. I'm going to vote for him because he might be short. Well. I'm going to vote for him because maybe he, 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 he has a good personality. Yeah. You know, all the different reasons why everybody had their reasons for voting. Right. And don't really get, never, come up, never heard him preach the first time. <laughs> but because of what somebody else said, I'm going to vote because somebody else said he was good. Yes. But God used all your own ideas to make you vote for the one he chose. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And, and, and with that, I want to remind all pastors, including myself, don't get so frustrated when they don't do what you want them to do, even when you know it's the will of God. Because so remind yourself that they belong to him. Amen. Remind yourself that, 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 that being hard-headed, but that's only natural. The Israelites were hard-headed. They were being stubborn. Only my, the, the Israelites were stubborn. But you just do what God did. Continue to love them. Amen. Continue to work with them. Continue to have patience with them. And I tell you, your, your stay will be sweet. Your stay will be long. You won't have to worry about whether they disagree with you or not. It's in God's hands. And sometimes when you understand it, you won't have secret nights. Uh -huh. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, Lord. I done told you about it. And nothing even me worried about it now. Yes. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> I'm going to get some rest. Yes. So that when I get up in the morning, I'll be refreshed Amen. and can tell and tackle the problems of the day of the world again. Amen. As well as your own problems. Yes. Oh, your assignment, Pastor. You heard it earlier, Jeremiah 3, 15 to 17, and I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And it shall come in the days past, and when they multiply and increase in the land in those days, said the Lord, they shall say no more. Do you know it's possible to feed them to where folk will say no more? You don't believe it? You take somebody out to eat and tell them to eat what you put on them. And when they think they're finished, you bring something else out. Eat some more this. <laughs> and it looks good. They got to eat some more that. And then you say, well, let me get somebody. And you bring something else out. And they got to taste some. I what? I can't eat no more. Mm. If you feed them good. Amen. If the Lord sends you the word good, they eat all they can take in for that moment. And take out and live on it. And when they need some more, they'll come back to you. Amen. And come back to the house of God to read some more. And then he says, I give them knowledge and wisdom. Yeah. You, you need both. Amen. You need knowledge because you need to know. Right. You need wisdom because you need to know how to apply the knowledge that you know. Yeah. Yeah. You, you don't want to be, as I often say, an educated fool. Amen. Amen. Someone who knows a lot of stuff, but don't know how to use yes. what they know. Come on now. Yes. The Lord wants intelligent beings. Mm. He wants intelligent children. Mm -hmm. Now, let me say this, and let's, let's not offend somebody. Uh, it's okay to be ignorant. That's right. And when I say ignorant, it means you don't have enough knowledge. That's right. However, you ought not to stay that way. That's it's right. There you go. Amen. You, you ought to recognize, I don't know. And, and being ignorant simply means you don't know. Mm. Uh, I don't know everything. I might be ignorant in some areas. Right. Right. I am ignorant in some areas. Mm. 
But 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 if it's something I really need to know, I'll make it my business to study it yeah. and then learn how to apply it. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. This is about me help, help you all out here. Uh, a, a few years ago, I decided I wanted to be, I want to learn how to fish better. <laughs> hey, my, my father was a good fisherman. He, he would take me fishing with him and and when he would take me fishing with him, of course, I wouldn't pay attention. I was too busy playing, mm -hmm. doing other things on the pier. Uh -huh. But that little fish, he would know how to cast out the net, cast out the line, mm -hmm. and then not get entangled with other people. Mm -hmm. So when I made that decision, I think I wanted uh, to learn how to fish. The first mistake I made was going to a pier, <laughs> fishing around a whole lot of folks who knew what they were doing, and I did not. <laughs> Lines get tangled, folks get fighting at you. I said, Earl, this is not for you. <laughs> so, so the next time I went fishing, I said, well, I'm going to get on a boat and go get sea fish. <laughs> that way there won't be a whole lot of folk around you. And, and everybody understands. And, and so I did. I went deep sea fish. Uh -huh. And so like everybody else, I was casting my net, my line out. I won't catch you nothing. <laughs> All those around me were catching something. Mm. And so finally I said, I'm going to do what I, know, what I know best. Lord, I know you spoke to the fish that swallowed Jonah. And if you can speak to that fish, you can speak to the one to get on my line. Well, you don't think that's funny. But the biggest catch of the day was made out of that prayer. It wasn't on my line, but it was made out of that prayer. <laughs> God I can do anything if you trust him. And no matter what it's about, you, you give him the opportunity to be involved in your life and watch him operate. Yeah. Uh, your assignment is to give them knowledge and wisdom. Well, and then right there in the text, I, I'm not going nowhere, I'm staying right there. It says, your purpose, that you should go and bring forth fruit. Mm, that you should go mm -hmm. and bring forth fruit. Mm -hmm. Now, Pastor, I had to think about that a little bit because I, I read in other places where, where, where it says that pastors don't produce offspring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The congregation does. Mm -hmm. Y'all got quite my well, well, that's right. Speak to us, man. That, that pastor, you're not responsible to, to, to bring all the new people into the church. No, no, mm. no. But the text says you should go and bring forth fruit. Well, mm. Lord, help me understand what you mean so that so that so that I, I, I can uh, be a correct expository of your word and not put my own meaning in it. Well, he said, well first of all, remember the fig tree that, that I saw on my way to Jerusalem. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He said, I came and, and I expected some fruit on the tree. Well. And when I got there, there was nothing there and I was hungry and I wanted to pick a fig and satisfy my hunger, but nothing was there. Mm -hmm. So I cursed the tree. Mm. Well. And, 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 and when we went on to Jerusalem, but when we came back, the disciples saw that the tree was cursed. Well. Uh, I, 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 I simply want to say to you, Pastor, let make sure your words are such that God will bring them to pass based on what you said in his power. Well, Amen. Come on, preacher. Make sure what you teach them well, is biblically sound so that you won't end up cursing them because they're really wrong. Well, come on. Make, make sure you, you're teaching them. So that while I'm away, yes. they're still growing. So that when I come back, right. they're still there. Yeah. All, right. Yeah. All right, then. Make sure that what you do is, is do what you need to make sure they are pro producing. Yeah. Well, yeah. All right. Pastor, what do you mean? He said, all right, remember the vine. Mm -hmm. There was a vine that, 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 that the master of the house had. And he wanted to tear it down. It, it was not producing. It was not. It was not. It was not uh, uh, accomplishing its purpose. And, and and the owner said, "We need to cut it down." Uh, but 
the vine dresser of his garden, the, the farmer, if you will, yeah. said, no, Lord, give it another chance. Yeah. Uh, let me work with it a little while. Yeah. Yeah. And if I work with it, perhaps it'll start growing. Uh -huh. You see, see God, God, Jesus has grown away for a while. Yeah. Yeah. But while he's gone, pastor has to work with you a while. Because some of us may not be producing anything. Yeah. Uh, so what does the vine do? He goes and he says, let me put some dung around the roots. Yeah. 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 Let me give it some water around the roots. Yeah. And, and let's give it some time to see if the roots will take hold of the nourishment. Yeah. Sometimes you got to give a word that they may not get it right then. Yeah. But let them go home and smell it a little while. Yeah. And watch the word be fruitful in their heart. You have to just make sure it's there. You're not responsible for them in taking it. You're responsible for making sure it's there. To the congregation, you're responsible for taking the word in. Learn how to apply it. And then so you can be a fruitful participant in the work of God. We are co-laborers together with God. Some plant, some water, but God gives the increase. God makes the fruit possible. That's your purpose. Make sure there's some fruit being produced in the vineyard mm -hmm. that you're in. Mm -hmm. And then try to detect your success. Mm -hmm. That your fruit should remain. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Remember the parable of uh, this is one the Lord just gave you, so this is free. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the parable where Jesus said Told the sword to go out and sow seeds. Uh -huh. He said, sow some on stony ground. Uh -huh. Sow some on soft ground. Uh -huh. Sow some in the rocks. Uh -huh. And then he described what happened to each of those seeds. Uh -huh. I'm simply saying that sometimes he really doesn't want to, but he's sowing seeds in rocky places. Uh -huh. Where people are having difficulty grasping uh -huh. what he's saying. Sometimes, sometimes the root, that roots are too shallow. Yeah. They can't dig down and, and, and become full. That's when you deal with baby Christians. Oh, it's alright, just feed them what they can handle. Oh, because after a while, they grow up. Yeah. And then sometimes you have to take them out of where they are yeah. and move them to somewhere else. Yeah. They can't keep hanging around the youth that keep acting foolish. But they have to put around some youth that ain't making some sense. They can't hang around gangs who keep here shooting up everybody. You gotta put them in a, in, a, in a camp where they can learn how to act. Right. You gotta somebody plant folk in different places yeah. so they'll be successful. And in the test of time, you will see what will happen. Sometimes you have to encourage saints in difficult times. Remind them that the Lord is a very present help in time of trouble. Preacher, what kind of trouble do saints get in? <laughs> 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 Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. We, to all of those who may be here who don't know the Lord, and you think that that those we who are saved by grace ought not never make a mistake, I, I'm here to just stop by just for a while. Mm. So you don't make the misconception that, that we are I don't want to use the word perfect because God calls us to be perfect, which means that he calls us to be mature. But we can be some mature Christians that can make some dumb mistakes. So, so, so sometimes to the sinner, when they see us mess up, we got to apologize to them. That's right. Forgive me for giving you the wrong demonstration of who Christ is. Amen. He's so far better than I, and I'm just trying to live up to his expectation. And you've got to understand that I'm still growing. All right, now. Yes, sir. Don't, 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 don't make them think that you're something that you're not. Come on, I'm, I'm still growing. Yes, sir. I, I haven't arrived at where I want to be yet. I'm still growing. Come on, now. And I tell you, if you accept the same God that I'm serving, yeah. I can accept you because I know that you'll be just like me, a sinner saved by grace. All right, now. Yes, sir. Yeah. Come on, now. Last thing, the text in the last phrase gives us your guarantee. Mm. He says that whatsoever you shall ask, mm. I feel like shouting now. Come on, whatsoever you shall ask, the Father in my name, He may give it to you. Mm. Mm. Yes, sir. The text says He may give it to you, mm. but I've discovered that He will give it to you. Yes, sir. 
If you live right, yes. if you do what God calls you to do, on, you can ask anything and not doubt, yes, and you'll do it. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My, my, my. And, you, and you can grow into this. I, 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 I discovered at a young age that I had to get the feeling. Mm. I, 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 I don't really remember all that went by, but I noticed that that mind you, I wasn't a preacher either. Mm. Okay, you know, come on now. He was trying to make that assumption, but you were preaching, so you get nothing. No, I was, I was just a boy mm. learning to trust in God. Well, come on now. And I was working at a place called Wendy's, mm. and a young girl had a headache so severe that that the enemy had caused the whole the whole room of, of, of Wendy's, the whole area where the cook area, everybody went in turmoil. It, it's hard to describe, but you would think there was peace here, but no, turmoil over here, turmoil out, people they were biting at each other, talking at each other, and going off. All it was that a demonic spirit Come on had now. entered in the room. Yes, sir. And, and this girl said, I got a headache. Mm. Didn't know what it was. I said, Do you, would you mind if I pray for you? Mm. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Every now and then I just like to brag on God sometimes. Come on, I man. Said, the God that I serve, yeah. he's going to take that away. Well, mm. She be like, are you foolish? Yeah. I said, Do you mind if I pray? She said, go ahead. I went over and she was at the fry station. Mm -hmm. I was at the grill. I turned my back on the grill, laid my hands on her mm. and said in the name of Jesus. Come on now. Whatever's going on, calm the fears. Yeah. Yeah. And then I took my hand up, went back to my spirit and filled the burgers. <laughs> While I was the burgers, everything in the room calmed down. Yeah. The spirit of God entered that place. Yeah. And that girl got delivered. Yeah. 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 Sometimes my, my. you gotta tell a sinner, let me brag on God just a little bit. Yeah. You gotta have a faith in God that when you pray yeah. on God's behalf, God will do something. Yeah. Yeah.
you're not sure that if this is the last day on this earth where you will spend eternity, I got a good news for you. The man told us in his word what to do. Amen. Whosoever shall come upon the name of the Lord shall, that word shall means yeah. will, not might, will be saved. Amen. If you're here today and you want to know the Lord is your person, you don't have to make any promises. He's made the promise. Just say him at his word. Call upon his name. Is there one here today? Is there one here today? Well,
Everybody here know what that is talking about. It's talking about the good, good Samaritan. The good Samaritan. And it talked about how that uh, some men went down the road. And when you look at that story, and I know time is getting out of here, I'm not trying to preach the sermon, but there were three types of people there. There was the first group was some robbers and some thieves. And robbers and thieves, you know what? A robber thinks that what is his is his, what is yours is his. And a robber ain't got much sense as a thief. See, a robber kid. Mm -hmm. A thief will just steal from it so he can come back and get it again. Mm -hmm. But a robber will beat you up and leave you laying down the side of the road dead. Well, that's the first type of people that are in the world. Robbers and thieves. And then the second type is religious folk. Yes. Well. Religious folk. All hypocrites. <laughs> A couple of them walked by and saw that man lay inside the road, a priest, a bishop. I hope he wasn't a moderate. <laughs> 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 they looked over, and when they looked at him, what did they do? They kept on yeah. about their business. But I'm proud to say that I know the pastor here, he's like the third came by a good guy, a good Samaritan, a Christian. Amen. You know what a Christian will do? Whatever is necessary to help you out. Amen. You can be sick, laying inside the road, beat up, left for dead by the robbers and by the thieves, but a good Christian will stop, take his car, turn it into an ambulance, put you in it, carry you to the hospital, make sure you provide it. Yeah. You don't have to have blue cross and blue shoes around, yeah. but a good Christian would do what? Pay for it. Yeah. And if you yeah. don't have enough, you know, tell the hospital or the emergency room or urgent care, say, look, trust me, take care of me. And if I don't, you don't have enough right now, when I come back, I do it again. Amen. This Amen. is the kind of man that's sitting to my Amen. left. Amen. A good man that love the Lord and would do things for people. Now, I'm not just saying this just to be saying it, but I have watched him, I have observed him, and you can't pay him enough for what he does, he is unpaid. You can't give him enough. Uh, traveling all over the state, coming on uh, media, buying his equipment and all this mm -hmm. different things Amen. so that he can work in mm -hmm. the kingdom. Yes. 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 He is a good Amen. Samaritan. Amen. And if I had to leave any thought with you, I want to say unto you, he has that third personality, that personality where he cares about us, cares about the laws, cares Amen. about those that are hurt, and whatever he has to do to enhance the kingdom of God, Jesus. he would do. Amen. Now, I'm not crazy because <laughs> A lot of times I wouldn't go, but if it had not been for my wife, <laughs> I wouldn't have gave that extra ten dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have went out in that house. <laughs> so we thank God for his mate. Yeah. I know that yeah. she encourages and she motivates him, and by that motivation and encouragement that comes from her. They both work well in the kingdom of God. Blessing to you. And may God continue to bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Trey. Before we go to the family, um, is one of the deacons from Alice Chapel here? Do you have something to say? <laughs> <laughs> Put your hands up. Thank you, Pastor Trey. That will happen when you do the other <laughs> I thank God for my being here today and to our pastor, Pastor Lud. We thank Pastor Lud. He also been out for nine years. And we just appreciate you and thank you for all what you do. Sister Lud, with your beard and smile, we love you to death. And we thank you and even your family when they come and fellowship with us. We are so grateful to have you these nine years. Amen. 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 Family 
giving honor to God who is the head of my life, Amen. recognizing the pastor of this great church, Amen. other ministers of the gospel, deacons, mothers, members, saints, and friends. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Say, I'm delighted to be in the house of the Lord one more time, for we know that it could have been the other way. But uh, on behalf of the family, we thank everyone for joining with us and celebrating this man of God and his preaching and teaching here at St. Stephen's for the past nine years. And we just all thank you how you all have uh, accepted and welcomed uh, our father, our husband, brother, grandfather, uh, father-in-law, and whatever capacity he may be in your life. Uh, and we just thank you for uh, opening your arms uh, for him in the church and in the community. And also, um, we cannot recognize the pastor without recognizing his wife, who happens to be my mother and your first lady. Because we know whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor in the Lord. Uh, I'll say one thing I like to say, so uh, dad and I, we go to the same barber, who happens to be my brother-in-law. And uh, when I first started going there, I think dad wanted to follow behind me because you know, he saw how good I looked. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and uh, so every time, I guess he just tried to get in to see what he could do for him. <laughs> and uh, I know every time he comes back from getting his hair cut, uh, you know, we'll joke around and say, I guess Dominique did the best that he could do. <laughs> and then, of course, mom, mom will be always be around, and she was like, uh-uh, my honey looks good. <laughs> and I'll say one thing, you know, remind us to get her eyes checked. <laughs> and, uh, I'll say, I just mentioned that story just to say, you know, just like our, bother, our barber who does the best that he can, uh, I just want to ask, are you doing the best that you can in your walk with the Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ? Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. First, we're going to let the uh, lady Lewis have remarks. First, I give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who's the head of my life. To my husband, uh, Pastor Lewis, to all the ministers present, to our deacons, mothers, members, and friends. It has been a joy and a privilege and an honor being married to this man. He keeps me laughing. He keeps me smiling all the time. We go to the doctor. We go to the doctor together. We have the same doctor. And we go together. And she always look at us. She said the last time we went, she said, Don't act like y'all just got married. <laughs> <laughs> because we get along, you know, so well. We um, joke with the doctor. We joke, laugh with the, uh, her nurse and everybody. So the whole office knows us. So, <laughs> but anyway, I, I did get up this morning. I was a little, a little, a little sad side. Because um, April 23rd is the ninth year since my mom has passed. Mm -hmm. On today, April 23rd. <coughs> and I, I'm always a little sad that day. But God, you know, he always tells me, get up, shake it off, and come on. Uh -huh. Do what you can. Uh -huh. Make someone laugh. Uh -huh. Make someone smile. Do what you can. So I want to thank everyone today for being here to help. My husband celebrates his ninth pastoral anniversary to help us. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you came one mile away or a hundred miles away, we thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and we love you. Amen. Thank you again, each of you, for coming and sharing today, and I have to turn up. Have a couple of notes and do not forget anything. And one, Lois has already addressed the fact that nine years ago uh, she lost she lost her mother. And uh, but God has been good. Amen. Yeah. 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 God has been good. He's brought us a mighty long way, Thank you, God. and it's a joy to be here this afternoon to celebrate in this uh, in this anniversary with St. Stephen's and to have all of you to come out this afternoon to those that came out this morning and they had to leave and uh 
I had uh, one one individual told my wife this morning, say whatever whatever they bless your husband with this afternoon, make sure you get half of it. <laughs> he said, actually, you can get three third, three fourths of it. Amen. So she's got three fourths of joy this afternoon. <laughs> because God has blessed us this afternoon. Amen. Through the words from Pastor Warren and God bless Thank you for that wonderful word, that wonderful word. And to this choir. Yeah. You know, for about three years, about the only ones that, you know, the governors had that, uh, you know, uh, order, uh, emergency order in place, and, you know, 10 people in the gathering and got to one point there where it was just the pastors and uh, somebody videoing, and the choir, you know, it was kind of lost. When they did come back in, they had the mask on and trying to sing and then pull that off. But I think you got three years of COVID build up in you <laughs> that you tried to let it out. You said, God, I thank you that you have forgiven us this opportunity and I'm going to sing. Yeah. I bless you. Thank you for such a wonderful uh, selection of song this afternoon. We, 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 uh, my sister came forward and she gave her reading and just to clarify something that she said there. And uh, because if you heard, if you heard it there, she said that Jesus was the best influence that's happened in my life. You know, James Cleveland, Sharon, they said Jesus is the best thing that's happened, ever happened to him. But see, Jesus isn't a thing. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. I, I, I just like to get that yes, clarification yes. and terminology oh, correct. Uh -huh. Say, Lois might get upset sometimes if I call her a thing, but she's the best thing. <laughs> but Jesus is the best influence yes, that's right. ever happened in my life. Yes. And just because of her being the best thing, she's got one other thing that she wanted to say. She whispered in my ear. So I'm going to get out of the way and let her say it. And to Malik, the youngest of six. <laughs> the strive be like this. <laughs> <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. To, to our children, six children, four of them which are in the building right Amen. now. Amen. Marquess Amen. left earlier to go back home to be with his wife, and as they go to the hospital to be with the newborn, Amen. Chantel is in Japan, and to our grandchildren. Uh, let's see, I have to do math this afternoon. Nine of them, it's nine of them in the building this afternoon, correct? Nine in the building this afternoon. Nine of the 13. And yes, we, we love them, we are thankful for them, and y'all did a wonderful job. And to the baby, to the baby, Imani. <laughs> yeah, I have to say that her and mama have a, they have a debut, de, 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 debate about who's actually my child, whether it's her or whether it's a mama. But see, one of the things about it, one of the things about it, I have to, I have to say because uh, even this morning, as Reverend Rice was preaching, he was talking about how Reverend, how he, as a, as a child, went into the pool and struggled mm -hmm. to come up and almost lost his life. A baby there and Jamisa fell into the pool. They didn't fall in, they actually went in. <laughs> but Imani ended up at ECU, mm. Vident, ECU Vident to now uh, ECU Health. She ended up in the uh, uh, pediatric ward, fighting for her life. But God. But God. Yeah. Yeah. And God. Yeah. Yeah. And God for, uh, just yeah. Just, just bringing her through. God is good and greatly to be praised. That's a lot of things I can say. And I don't want to omit anyone. I just want to say I'm glad to see my friends, uh, uh, Brother Sister Walker from uh, my first pastor, St. Paul. Amen. Amen. I was looking for our brother Charles from uh, Washington. He said that he was going to do his best to get here this afternoon from uh, First Baptist. And we are so thankful for Anderson Chapel being Amen. in the house. Amen. We thank God for them. Nine years concurrently 
It happened in just the case that I've, I've always pastored, a, as we call it, a station church. And whenever I came to Rocky Mountain, these two non-station churches, I was, uh, I was, uh, had applied to both, and they were in the process of their voting. And I said, Lord, you know, uh, who do I? I've only, I've always been at just a station church. I've never liked splitting my time. He said, if the call comes within 30 days from the two churches, then you will go. The call came within 14 days of the two churches. That's how I ended up at Anderson and St. Steve. So I thank God for them this afternoon. Thank God for the extended family that is here. All the pastors that have come to help us celebrate, uh, we thank God for you and your great support. Amen. We thank God for President uh, McLaren and Vice President Amen. Skinner from the Western Union Amen. and being here this afternoon. Uh, be reminded the union will meet in this coming weekend and it is election time, so please come out and be part of the union. Thank God for uh, the, uh, Reverend Owens, uh, the ladies auxiliary. I, I, I thank her always, but I thank her again this afternoon because she brought a shake for the uh, dental and uh, health uh, ministry this afternoon. Amen. And we know, those of you, we have the dental clinic going on July 14th and 15th, and also July 21st and 22nd, along with the uh, health ministry on the, the 21st and 22nd. Please, uh, uh, we solicit your support for that. Uh, I know it's my anniversary that we're celebrating here today, but th this is my passion. This is my heart, Amen. the health and dental unit, and we just uh, solicit your support for that. Amen. We are thankful for uh, our new friend, uh, Dr. Early Williams of Bethlehem Missionary Baptist Church, uh, who uh, many of you, if you deal with the missionary, have helpers. She, she wrote the, the uh, month lesson for December, and she's our Women's Day speaker on the second Sunday in May. Man, so come yeah. back and join in with us with that. I'm delighted to see my co-worker, uh, Reverend, the right Reverend, my proud brother, Clarence Gray, come in this afternoon with his wife, Pastor of Word of Truth Tabernacles in Greenville. It's wonderful to have you here, to the deacons of Anderson, to uh, Minister Howard from Anderson uh, to, uh, let me look around, to my pastor. Amen. To my pastor. Amen. Pastor Holmes. We're so delighted to have him this afternoon. And uh, Pastor Warren and Pastor Holmes, the two of you share something in common. If you have not already discussed it, you need, you need, you need to discuss it. You have something in common. I'll just go ahead and say, both of them are kidney recipients. Wonderful things, Amen. wonderful things with with that, and to, to my to my friend and my uh, sister, uh, Lady Warren, for all that she does to help us with Amen. the help of dental clinic. Uh, to my brother and my sister, traveling all the way from Winston Salem. Amen. 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 To my sisters that travel from Wilmington. To my children. To everybody. Amen. I just love you. Amen. I thank God for you. For God has brought us a mighty long way. Amen. The point is, make sure I don't forget somebody. <laughs> oh, and to, and to Sister Sega Lane and who else from Union Chapel back there? Amen. Amen. God bless you. We thank God for you for coming this afternoon. Uh, to the youth, I have to say to the youth, uh, I thank you for the dough. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thank you for, for, the, for, the, for the piece yes, of them. The, the interesting fact about it, uh, Reverend McClure, last year they gave me a necktie, a money tie. <laughs> and so so what, I, what I did, they don't know that I saved that tie to today. I actually meant to have worn it today. <laughs> but now with the, with the money tie and the, the piece, of, I'm going to eat in style now. <laughs> <laughs> Look like it might even be Ruth Chris. I don't know. <laughs> God bless you. And again, I thank thank God for for our minister of music here, uh, Minister Tyshawn Stringfield, who who prayed today, and he will be our men's day speaker yeah. along yeah. with uh, yeah. 
providing the music on that day. That's the second Sunday in June. We have a lot of things going on here at St. Stephen's, and God is blessing us, and he's moving. He's moving in the midst to all the uh, sisters from Anderson Chapel that is here. And to Mother Wiggs. Amen. Amen. 98 years old. Yeah. 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 And you, you can hear about any Sunday, any Sunday prayer, Amen. doing our devotional service. Amen. And we just Amen. thank God for her. And uh, not only that, but uh, she's got a lot of history. Mm -hmm. And I've been trying to get her and her and Brother Dancy together <laughs> so that he can record some of that history yeah. to yeah. preserve it for, for our for our our knowledge. And I I I, I just I appreciate every one of you here. And I hope to get a chance to shake your hand and, 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 and love on you before you leave. But uh uh your mother looks like she wants to say she wants to say oh. oh she's telling me to hurry up <laughs> but i just i just want to i just want to ask pastor gray because i always i'm always trying to get him here in the month of april for something but there's something that special happens in his family during the month of april that it's just hard to come out and he's here today so i just want to ask him just to have a word if you will <laughs> Shoot, I think I'm about to be here on this afternoon. My good brother, my friend, amen, Pastor Lewis, amen. Thank God uh, we've been together for amen, at least five years now. Amen. He's trained me and taught me on my job and took me under his wing. Mm -hmm. And I thank God for his spirit, his love. I thank God for his friendship because he's been here for me in so many ways, amen. And I just thank God, amen. He's right. I've been wanting to get here. <laughs> it hasn't been intentional. I've been wanting to get here again, but thank God I made it today. Amen. 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 Thank y'all again. Amen. Love y'all. Love you all. I don't have to know you by name. I love y'all. Amen. 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 Thank you one more thing, and thank God for my wife. Amen. 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 Thank you. And first lady. <laughs> Amen. 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 I sort of whispered that to you. Know, like she was something to me. And I think uh, I think it's something about uh, uh these were, I think the birthday is something is that April? May. May. Yeah. All right. <laughs> coming up. All right. And we thank Brother Dancy for coming Amen. this afternoon Amen. and dealing and providing and uh, preserving this this afternoon. Amen. And I know you have plenty of pictures, so if you if you miss the picture, he will take a picture. He'll, he'll give you, he'll give you a copy. He'll share a copy with you, and you can also be a blessing to him. So we thank God for each of you. Uh, uh, and and one last, one last thing. I just all the pastors, all the pastors. Will you please just stand? I just want to recognize the pastors. Pastor Brown. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, God bless you. We appreciate you for being in the house today. And I know I did not call all the ministers, but I, I just wanted to, uh, the ministers stand, even if you're not pastor. I didn't want to acknowledge you. There you go. Amen. We thank God for you, likewise, coming and sharing with us. Uh, if there's a... Uh, I don't want to omit any anyone. Uh, the the children, we thank God for you, the siblings, and it's all good because uh, if the children don't get a chance to say anything, please see Janisa, and Janisa will tell you exactly. No, say Janisa is the one that told her to tell me to hurry oh, okay. up. So Janisa, <laughs> we are, we are keep you straight. So. We uh, thank God for you. We love you. Thank you again, choir. Thank you, Pastor uh, Warren. Thank you, Pastor Holmes. Thank you, moderator. Thank each of you. And God is good. Continue to keep us in prayer. Amen. Because we all need prayer. And I am trusting and dependent upon God for all that he does for us. And there's great things in store if we trust in God. I want to tell you right now, I've been telling people all week long, as they've been talking about a lot of things that's been happening in the news, and we're not going 
get your news details here this afternoon. But I just want to say it's because we have strayed away from God. Amen. We, our children, yes. and our yes. adults, Amen. we need to come back to God. Amen. And if we walk and live according to God's word, everything will be good. Pastor Lewis, if I could, I just want to thank you for the kind words that you gave the choir. I want the church to know that my wife and I play and sing on four Sundays in Amelia, Virginia. And that's where we were coming from today. And we sung hard this morning. <laughs> my voice was gone. As I was coming down 95, I said, okay, what I'm going to do when I get to Goldsboro? <laughs> but I didn't do nothing to talk to God about it. All right. I sucked on my halls. <laughs> and I got up here today, I didn't know what was coming up. <laughs> but trust in Jesus. Yeah. He'll see you through. Yeah. I couldn't even tell I had stung this morning. But I started saying to see you. That's what I'm talking about God will do for you. Yeah. 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 Uh, Pastor Lewis, I want to say, um, you know, I, I, I was home doing the audio of the of the Sunday school, and uh, when I said I was gonna get on the road, I said maybe he don't know where I'm coming. Um, so I stopped in Wilson and ate. Well, I went through Rocky Mountain, living pine top, went to our car wash. It was closed, so I had to go to the other car wash and pay for it. So I'm just letting you know you owe me for my car wash. <laughs> They charge you for nothing else, but you owe me for that car wash. So, uh, you know I won't come down here without my car wash. <laughs> but I want to piggyback on what Malik said about them um, together. We be at the car wash a lot, and, and, and they look like two little children out there washing the car. <laughs> so I just want to add that in. <laughs> Sitting here reading the bulletin this time, and see 19 
You mean to tell me I've been around with Reverend Lewis 43 years? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 43 years. He took me in when I was a, when he was a young man and I was old man. <laughs> I, I thank God because what the pastor was preaching today, you want to know a rich man? Don't look in this pocketbook. Look what I said. Amen. Amen. Oh, my bees. No, y'all don't know my bees. Right but now I'm going to tell you, rich. God is good. Amen. And when you walk with God, He pulls blessings out of you. Amen. You wouldn't believe Amen. 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 Just believe. <laughs> this was the smallest thing that's ever seen in my life. <laughs> and I thank God because we walk with you. And look, remember, do this took me and I was a sinner. Driving, he's older than me, but he wished and worked for me. Jesus. We were ambitious. Amen. 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 My wife is sitting there. She don't want to see my <laughs> We've been married 15 years now. Amen. We've been walking together because the revenue is bad. Some of my children also for my wife. So God is good. God is good. Amen. And you see what you do. You be happy. Never forget. Keep working together. Amen. Keep walking together. And give God all the praise and glory. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Governor Lewis. Amen. 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 Amen.
for communion of the Holy Spirit. May he walk with you. May he talk with you. May he lead you and guide you from one truth to another. May his spirit protect you and help you battle the evil forces of this day. May the Lord be your strength, your God, your love, and your peace. Not just now, but in the days ahead and forevermore. In the name of Christ, our Lord, we pray. Everybody, everybody.